we're ready to go whenever you are. Okay, everybody, welcome to the October 11th, 2018 work session of the Penfield Planning Board. Allison, please call the roll. Petsky? Here. Baskin? Here. Knauer? Here. Tidings? Here. Nursinger? Here. O'Connor? Here. Weissar? Here. All right, with that all taken care of, we have some minutes from our September 27th work uh, session that hopefully everyone's had an opportunity to review. And maybe we can entertain a motion to move to approve. I'll second. All right. Bastion. Hudski? Aye. Bastion? Aye. Knauer? Aye. Tidings? Aye. Okay, Zach, you want to go through our tabled applications? You got it. We have one application with updates tonight, and that's for Delta Sonic. The rest of the applications on the agenda require no action from the board tonight, so I'm going to jump right into Delta Sonic's application. This is uh, for the expansion um, of the overall use on the property where we're including the <coughs> vehicle vacuum stations now. Uh, we have a cluster at the north end of the site that's the existing Delta Sonic. They've acquired the site to the south. And we'll repurpose it for both indoor uh, vacuum stations as well as outdoor ones along the southern property line. The board issued a tabling resolution asking for a number of things and we're trying to recapture all of them here for you uh, now on the landscape plan. The first thing I'll point out is that originally the southern vacuum stations were in this area here closest to the <coughs> southeast corner near Empire Boulevard. They've been shifted back on the property more in line with the building and they're showing an enclosure around this vacuum blower system here that services these stations. They've also increased the amount of green space on the site. They have relocated their monument sign that was once here and now is relocated further to the south. It does not require a setback variance. It complies with the 20-foot setback. <coughs> They've also addressed some of the traffic circulation uh, concerns the board had. They've shown one-way traffic around the building. There was a two-way arrow here that's been removed. The drying stalls, when you leave the tunnel, and you can see the pavement markings, indicate that if you're going to get the vehicle dried, you're going to go towards this area. Again, one-way traffic only. There's not an opportunity for through traffic here like the previous version of the plan showed. Go through the drying stations, and if you care to get your vehicle vacuumed out, you go do that yourself. You have the ones to the south that are open as well. Employee parking here now. Um, let's see here. Other changes and updates that we have. So that hasn't changed to a one-way <coughs> entrance at the south end. It's both two ways so that vehicles can enter in off Empire Boulevard and go to the vacuum building or stations correct uh, without going through the drive stations correct correct this is a two-way entrance they mm -hmm. will have to get a you know they're gonna have to get a permit from the DOT anyways to close a permit here we're reviewing this right now uh, town engineer he's, he's reviewing some some of his concerns for um, drainage runoff accumulation rather from vehicles historically um, car washes in general especially this location here at this existing exit pavement tends to deteriorate very quickly in the winter months and it's hard to maintain even through the summer um, and this being a state road they're looking at they're trying just to investigate if there's any opportunities other than regrading to uh, improve the runoff collection from the vehicles sitting there and how that water is collected so it doesn't become an icing or a um, maintenance issue for pavement so they're gonna look at the same thing here as well um, obviously you wouldn't expect a vehicle to be as wet when you get to this point, but if they skip the drying process and leave the tunnel, they're just taking a straight shot back out to Empire Boulevard, and obviously there is some queuing there sometimes. Right. Um, but overall, this is the circulation has improved, so you would enter the site, either go to the car wash or the gas station convenience store, or you're there for the detail service. You come in one way to use all those services, and as you said, AJ, if you're just there to use these vacuums or these ones, which are for the uh, membership service only, um, you do have this entrance available. And then once you're done with the other services, the main exit is still here at the midway point of the site, and you still have a secondary exit here. 
Um, <coughs> parking. Parking, based on zoning, is compliant. They're providing 50. They required 39. And then the whole, the whole, the whole project. Yep, and, and to, it includes both parcels. So you look at the total, and they have provided the ex excessive, actually, an excess. That's without any adding any new ones on. Well, they're gaining parking here <coughs> at the southern site, right down here. And they're gaining parking here as well. So doing a really... They've got approximately right 11 to 15 cars over their park right now in that, that big where the building is. Yep. So you're saying they're picking up parking. I don't understand how they're going to do that. <coughs> they have a new building there and all those uh, dryers. Well, these are parking spaces here for employees. Okay. We have more parking here. For employees, six more here. I believe there's a total of six, four, six seven there. Eight, can't count. And then um, have the existing 11 here, seven to the rear as well. Yeah, but those are for customers at the front of the store. Yep. For employees, right? They're supposed to be. These are for customers. Yeah. <coughs> this is customer. This is typically customer as well because if you got to drop off your vehicle for details. Pictures default. Yep. Like when I go in there, it's always full in the back and the front. Nine chances out of ten, you won't even find a parking spot to go in the store. Most people gas up and leave their cars at the gas pumps. Yep. So, so, so where's the detail shop on this? Uh, right here. I'm trying to look at, okay, so the two arrows going in, that's where the car's going. Okay. Yep. What about oil changes? <clears throat> that takes place in this area as well. This is your. This is the um, Conveyor. tunnel. Okay. <coughs> okay. I'll also note that the landscape plan that we got here was sent to Bruce. He looked at it, issued a few comments back to the applicant, um, but overall they are technical in nature, not anything overwhelming. So ultimately with parking, they're increasing the number of spaces available Correct. with the new proposal. Correct. Because now the site is getting larger, so they are providing parking. So they still have that. vacuum stations along the front? Yep, 10. And then they're along the outside along the south yep but then they've got the enclosed so they didn't reduce the number of vacuum stations no what is it 32 total 32 total and the sound study was updated uh, as well as I'm sure you saw to kind of clean yep. up the study uh, it re-examined um, this locate with the vacuums in this location now and its impacts towards the neighboring properties, mainly uh, Royal Dynasty is immediately to the south, so that was reviewed again. The conclusion of the sound study was that um, at peak hours for the noise generated from site noise, basically from like the traffic generated from Empire Boulevard and the site itself, uh, compared to the noise generated from all of the vacuums going simultaneously at uh, most, at all, pretty much all the points, there was not a net increase overall. I was out at the Delta in Henrietta over the weekend, and um, I have to agree with that. And that's not as busy as this road, but it was still, mm -hmm. was that West Henrietta Road? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you couldn't receive anything at the road, outside of road noise, and this was, you know, noon, one o'clock, so yeah. Okay, I'm satisfied with the noise issue. I know that I had a problem with that at first, but no longer. Yeah, and as I as I added here, they provide a sound enclosure around this yep. one. There's nothing on this one right now, so that was going to be a question for the board, if not for noise, if it was a visual concern of the board for seeing the mechanical um, elements outside there. I mean, they are attempting to buffer it here with plantings, so that does come into play. It's just a question I have to ask regarding but that's the existing. visual. Correct. No. But the one to the exists now. That's where yours. Yeah, that's that spot where those uh, dryers are going to be in front. Those are usually that's where usually cars park to go into the. Uh, yeah, I mean nothing. Door. Nothing here exists now except oh, for landscaping. Yeah. Okay. This is all. This is still proposed. New. They as used well. it for parking. Thing. So people yeah. parallel yeah. park or yeah or yeah. They park, there's park like park four there. or five cars usually parked there to use the store because there's no other parking in front. So what and was now you put dryers there. I'm sorry, Todd. I mean, there goes those parking spots. Probably just like gas stations, you'll probably see people park there. 
So what was the question about that feature at the top? Basically, my question for the board, just looking at it from a visual standpoint, because the noise generated from here wasn't um, found to be a negative impact in the sound study. Okay. If the board wanted to just, if there was any visual uh, improvements, the board of wanted having to... the enclosure around it? Yes. Is there a detail of the enclosure? Yes, there is in the detail. Of the other one, there is, yeah. It's easier. I went through the plan set. It was easier to find. And then some type of uh, elevation of the vacuum on its own so that this we could see what what they look like with and without. Sometimes the enclosure is more visually impactful than just the equipment. Since that, that enclosure yeah. was going to kind of be pushed in the back next yeah. to the dumpster enclosure with the fence, we weren't really proposing anything. Anything like a, anything architecturally, okay. like really enhanced or anything for that one. Our thought would be to be a building at the entrance. We'd rather really attempt with nice landscaping to try to do the visual buffing so it kind of looks a little nicer than more of a dense, soft shrubs and yeah, yeah. but to camouflage it with yeah, that's shrubs. what our goal we're trying to do. Okay, how yeah. many units are in there? <coughs> there? Right in front of the store, like 10? 10. 10. 10, that many. 10, 8, and then 16 in the building. Yeah, I mean, up front, along front, uh, the Empire Boulevard there. 10. 10. 10. Is that number? 14 in the building. Yeah, that's 16. 14, sorry. Hey, Zach. It's been a day. I thought you were good <laughs> at math. Yeah, I'm not an engineer. Thank 16. you. Started out as an engineer. Oh, Didn't work out well. So they're going to go the whole length of the, the, the frontage of Empire Boulevard. That they have today, yeah. But there's no landscape plan out there at all. There, yeah. There's minimal landscape. Yeah, there's a few trees, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's like little there's, shrubs there's, there's stuff there's that they maintain. Uh, we'll see. I like to see if they could do, you know, it's a lot. I don't know why they, you know, I mean, really blacks the place. I there you go. That's what it kind of looks like today. So you have a landscape element there now, but all this would be enhanced as well as across the front. So that becomes parking. Or this becomes parking. Vacuums. Come comes in 20 feet of that. Mm -hmm. You I'm use this. I, 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 go every day. I go to Panorama. Yeah. So. Um, so you know, I'm, I can't say that you know I've been here, but I'm not a regular there. That, I, I don't know how they can get them. First of all, I don't think it looks good because it's in the front of it. Like the, the view of the, you know, the black the view. I mean, so now you can have all these big, there's an Empire Boulevard. And then if they're taking those parking spots that they're presently used, and they use them because it's, it's always busy, people leave their cars at the gas pumps. There's no place else to park. And there's really not a lot of room there anyways. To get into the gas pumps, you know, because everybody, you know, some people have their uh, gas tanks on the right, some on the left, so they're always cruising around to get the, you know, to the right pump. There's not a lot of room between that front del area where they park cars, where these containers <coughs> going to go. No, there's not a lot of room there between the pumps there. I don't even know how they're going to get them in there. It's a plan, if they're angled, I mean, it's going to be tight. Yeah. Go ahead. So we're going to wind up with actually 39 feet now of clearance going from the end of the pump to where the vacuums are going to start because the vacuums are going inside the curb line. Oh, you're going to, going to yeah, well, we're putting the them line. in there and then it's going to, it'll actually make it better so then if we have those spaces, as Zach mentioned, people do use them also for parking as well. We don't regulate them until someone, uh -huh. you've been here 20 minutes, you have to leave or stuff like that. But also then it will keep those cars, then as you're saying, that parallel park there which then kind of opens up that drive lane, provides for better circulation there. Because with parallel parking, you're probably down to about 22 to 20 feet probably existing. There's cars there. Yep. Now it'll be up to about 30 to 35 with the drive lane there. And then these are going to be, it's going to be the similar look to what we have at West Ridge Road. Right. As well with what's out front. We, we don't do them as a heavy structure. We try to do them so they're more open. They got the little canopy up so we don't do a long wall across the front to block it. We open it up so you can still see through the whole structure and then you'll be able to see the gas 
canopy and everything behind it, the store and all that as well. Yeah, we had some photos of what it looked like from a different <coughs> location, I think. Yes, probably the West Ridge Road location. I don't know if it was West Ridge. It looked a little different. You pull those up, you got them? It could have been just, um, a, you know what? Actually, it might have been one in um, Buffalo. Or I think so. It was in the final line. Well, right now in Delta here in town, when there's people parked along Panorama, Right. Park to get. It's really, really tight. It's very tight. Yeah. Uh, so well, it looks like there's going to be like another 20 feet here. Or well, they're going to, because he's going to dig into that. Right. I mean, because it's wider where the landscaping is now. Right. So you can, so they're going to okay. dig that up. But there goes less of the landscaping to, to make room for these, uh, all these uh, vacuums, the 16 vacuums. Try elevations or after yeah. correspondence. What are you looking for? The photos what that, Matt, like? that Matt was explaining. Yeah. Go to the applicant correspondence, please. There we go. Submitted photos. Just open one and toggle through. You get those big blue uh, loops or whatever. Yeah, this is kind of tough to see. But which one is this? West Ridge? No, I think, I so. no, I think this, might, this might be our transit road location. Yeah, it's not West Ridge. It's transit road to Clarence. Uh, okay, but, but that's what's good. Yeah, but that's the same one as um. That's the same look as the West Ridge Road. So and this is what it's going to look like, similar. Uh, yes. This? Now they don't have a sidewalk there, right? And they're not required to put a sidewalk in. There's a sidewalk. There's a sidewalk required. Okay. Thirty-two. Oh. Number? Yes. yes. No variance is required, right? None. Correct. They have lot coverage complies, parking complies. Um, this board's reviewing the expansion to conditional use. And there's a sound fence going up on the southern border. Correct. It'll, it'll terminate just beyond the, the back sort of stations. Sort of turns northeast that way. Looks like it. Angles northeast to block. It's a six foot sound fence or? Yes. And what's it made out of? Matt, correct me if I'm wrong, that was, a, was that a wooden board on board? It <laughs> uh, should be actually solid board. Solid board? board. board on board doesn't do as good okay. on the so sound. Solid so we board. do solid board for sound. I don't remember what was used in Panorama Plaza. Because they put up. Well, there's a retaining wall, then they put an eight foot fence yeah. above it, but that it's required like a, a variance fence. Solid board fence. Yeah, six foot high is what we were proposing for that. Could they go higher? Should they go higher? Would it make a variance? It would require a variance. If we're asking for it. I think. Hmm. Do you have an existing fence out there today? Would it be better or worse? It, I can't, that one I don't know because it would be on the other property. Yeah, I don't know if you really want a high fence over there. The dry cleaner now in Royal Dines. Because it's going to be really visual. Are driving there? Yeah. I don't remember. I don't think there is one right now. It's going to be just the restaurant. Yeah, to say the restaurant. So do you want a six foot fence? Or, or Maybe they place? could put video panels and show like... I don't know. It's That's a like sign drive in moving on the van. <laughs> <laughs> or so if you're something. sitting in Royal Dynasty, you can There's look out and see, like, you know, video of car wash. <laughs> China and Hong Kong. And traffic stuff. circulation on that one side is just so weird. But where do you go if you come in? So I think or what? And you, you come in, you, you, know, you have to turn around and leave. So I guess you just fall away. We come here, here and we're here. Yeah, it's right. Now we're about to come in here and then you go straight. This? Yeah. It's two way there. It's straight so you can get in here. Oh, okay. There may have to be a, a do not enter sign somewhere here so people don't accidentally do something stupid. Go backwards through the car. Wall. But I mean, this is this is designed to bring you in here and back out and go because they got the width. <laughs> yeah. It's a good point. We do not enter sign at the. West end of the uh, enclosed vacuum building. And also probably at this point here. 
All right. Even on the east end, we could put the sign up like right at the start of the vacuum building and just say do not enter there. Same here, Matt? Nope. Down where the enclosure is uh -huh. around the motors, like right there. Oh, yeah. We have a little space there so we can put it right there. So after this is constructed as part of the final certificate of compliance or whatever, would there sorry, would we want to ask for field measurements as built for those sound levels? Or because I know it's it's modeled, but <coughs> modeling in reality are two different things. AJ, I'm going to ask you on this one. Have you recorded that in the past? Because of the projects I've done, we have not recorded not, that. Not that I, I remember. Um, I know we've always, when it's been an issue, we've had significant studies ahead of time. Yeah. You never. Okay. After um, that typically not to my in. knowledge, uh, and after the fact one. And I don't know if we've ever gotten any complaints after the fact and maybe that's other than from yeah. uh, other activities other activities not activities like this and I would say if there was a noise complaint say even after built the Royal Dynasty and it falls within the town's code for that and no point are we going to come back and ever say well we submitted a noise study as part of the application yeah. as my understanding that doesn't relieve us if it comes back in six months later, ten years later, Royal Dynasty or someone else is complaining, we're still required to comply with the code and make any corrections to the compliance. I would think well, it's a conditional use as well, correct? So we have yeah. some. Yeah. Yeah, I think it probably okay. it makes sense to put in something that if there if there is an issue and they do need to prove that the studies that they're in compliance with what the studies right. suggested. Mm -hmm. That could be in your findings with conditional use. That could be something that we can put in. Okay. Yeah. I just think so that, you know, that, that would trigger that, that testing only if it became an issue. If it became an issue. Right. Yeah, that works. Okay. Do you mind if I ask Matt another question while he's here? No, go ahead. Matt, the motors are proposed to run, be available, I'm sorry, from 7 to 9, oh, yeah, Monday right. through Sunday. Yep. Is it 7 a.m. on? and stay on, like you hear the motors going, or is it like an on-demand system where someone calls for it when they grab a nozzle and then they keep, then they it is, rev it, up? It goes on in the morning and then it shuts off at night, so it's- Continuous. It's a continuous, it's on, yes. Okay, really? The only thing that's not though is the, because each one, everything works off of the motor, so there's no like on or off switch or anything. What gets kind of triggered in is the nozzle, just because they're all, they have holders in there that'll oh. seal up that gets pulled out by the person and they get to use it, but I don't believe that they have to turn anything on then to activate that because it's a single power motor for the whole system, not an individual motor at each okay. location. Okay. So you got so what are they running all the time? Or all of them working, it's going to be a constant noise. The same noise. It's the same, it's the same noise, yes, out of the motor, regardless of if there's one person there or eight. So as more people use it, the noise doesn't increase. From the motor. The motor doesn't start to get louder as there's more. It's just so what we studied and what we provided, it's not like two people using it, it's at this level, nine people are using it, it's at, it's at this level. Mm -hmm. It just it provides the same. So you got 32 going constantly well, at this level? Well, no, we have three. In the enclosure, we have the motors for the south and the indoor vacuum building are in there. Okay. And then we just have another motor for the ones up there. So there's only a total of two locations with motors, which is what we have found is better versus the old systems where each vacuum itself had its okay. own okay. motor. One other question. The three lanes now, you want to increase from two to three lanes? Is that the, uh, I'm trying to think of the other locations. Are there any other ones, three lanes yet? The Monroe County area? Uh, Greece is two. at least three. It, opens it? Three. it yeah. opened up to three. It's yeah, Greece, three Greece is three at there. And honestly, our goal is every location is to get as many. We'll do four at places. We just we try to get as much as we can for more stacking to pull the cars in and get them out from stacking farther back. 
really is the biggest thing we try to do. And then we add the prep putts around the double prep putt because that lets us get more cars oh, in as well. Because by getting the tunnel can do it a lot of times, some of the bigger things is also you'll notice you'll see the cars get sprayed down and someone will be there for 45 or 60 seconds sometimes on certain cars spraying it down. So the double prep putt also helps us to increase getting those cars in there quicker as well. So it's all trying to get more stacking to pull the traffic away from the front and then let the cars get serviced a little bit with our prep putts. Yeah, today it's one and going to two wide. Oh so well, yeah, I mean as long as you're you know, trying to not to the person next to you, if you got two people, go ahead or you know, mm -hmm. go ahead. But when you got four, you're looking here, everybody's be a very good in that situation, you're all nudging up and like, okay, who's gonna be the first guy in? Who's gonna right. third now you got third, fourth guy trying to nudge yeah, it's in. Like trying to go over a bridge in New York City. Tunnels. Yeah. Tunnels yeah. are worse. Yeah. Yeah. We get the heavier gas pedal, right? Yeah, like twenty yeah. cars uh, wide going on to one the, one uh, call it the blade. the pinch point is gonna be two. It's gonna be coming out of the two interior big boots there. The hut. Yep, and then coming out of the hut. And that's where cars, with everything we're doing there, the cars are going very, very slow at that point. So it's... You got it. Okay, that hut, you don't want to be driving too fast when you're coming around that bend. Well, the hut then will stop. We'll also <laughs> stop people then because they'll be getting sprayed down. So then they're doing the zipper, basically. One comes from each, each side. Oh, the people are pretty courteous, though. <clears throat> You haven't seen it when it's busy. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't been there when you were there. I, <laughs> I keep my car immaculate. So it's the... Uh, yeah, yeah, I've seen pretty much you mostly, still got mostly on friendlies and yeah. yeah. panorama. Yeah. Maybe it's in North Penfielders that are not as friendly. <laughs> as Down in Pet Panorama. That's all people from Webster, really. They're going, you know, we're coming in our town, going our shots across Delta the border. Delta Sonic. <laughs> yeah, my daughter's a Webster person now. I can say it. It's okay now. I guess. Yeah. We got one sitting there, too. Yikes. Um, All right, so people from Webster aren't that bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, I'm trying to go through anything else that I had. Uh, snow storage was identified on the site plan, too, Bill, in a couple we'll locations. Got you in position. The only other comment I would have for the board, and unless you guys have other stuff to debate, um, <laughs> was with the sound study. It, like again, it measured noises at the peak hours. So we see peak traffic conditions, which is around 6 p.m., along with the three three motors running. Um, What's it gonna do at you 10 see where I'm going. 11 a.m. or 3 p.m. from 6 to, or rather like 7, 8, 9 p.m. What is that noise without the background noise level? Was something that the engineer, I'll, but ourselves there, and the engineers, aren't were they closed at. down at that point? Nine, 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 nine p.m. Right? You can still get a car wash at nine p.m. Gas is usually open even later. Well, we'll find out. Okay. I don't think it's going to be an issue. Right? I was at the ambient, and I basically you don't even hear it, but maybe because of the ambient background uh -huh. noise. Henrietta. Do you have like cotton sites under your your head head a guy. Do you have earplugs in or anything? Or? No. Yeah. We don't want to become a Henrietta, trust me. <laughs> no, I was just out there for no reason. I'm just taking ever. shots at every town tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Who else have we talked about? <laughs> well, I'm sure there's plenty. I could talk about Greece for days, so. All right. Um, what other concerns do people have? Okay. No, you got concerns about the parking. <coughs> yeah, um, I think it's just too. I, I think it's yeah. The parking's going to be a mess, and uh, I think there's too many vacuum cleaners. I don't think we need 32. So. I have that's to a, say I'm ambivalent on that. That's a key question for the board: is that number? Right? I don't know what their number is. I'm not in that business. Yeah, I'm not, I'm same, feel the same way. So, they can feel pretty you know, Yeah, does, does it seem like a lot of uh, vacuums? Yeah, 32 at the same time. But I, I agree with you, Bill. I'm not, 
I'm not in that business. So. Mm -hmm. I'm all set. So at that point, okay. hearing that, um, we want to start a. We can start a draft. Draft approval. Uh, I'll try to obtain any more information from uh, engineers and DOT any correspondence regarding the southern exit. If that layout has to be modified in any way, mm -hmm. um, make sure it's good for two-way traffic, because previously this site had one in, had two curb cuts. So just trying to confirm that that's what they need. Um, They'll make the necessary landscape changes based on Bruce's memo. And that's all I have. All right, anything else from you guys? No. I okay. mean, I'm, I'm make motion to start a draft. Second. And, and table one. And table two. Yeah. That's where the plan is. There we go. Hetsky? Aye. Bastion? Aye. Knauer? Aye. Tidings? Aye. All right. That's it. No other, no miscellaneous, no nothing. Not a thing. Right. Anybody else have any new business? I don't know why I'm asking. You never do. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Usually it's us. All right. Yeah. Usually, Usually it's us. us. We will adjourn. Thanks everyone for coming. Thank you.